do you want me to tell you the truth about your job and AI or do you want me to tell you something that you are gonna like? Well, unfortunately, it doesn't matter because I'm gonna tell you the truth and you are not gonna like it. Actually, the only thing that you are gonna like about this video will come at the end because that's when I'm gonna tell you how you can save yourself from the purge. But before the good part, I have to scare the hell out of you because only those aware, only those sufficiently scared about what's coming will take the necessary action. Hi, I'm Matt Garcia and I write books about Web3 and artificial intelligence. My insights come from a blend of hands-on experience working in tech and an academic background in biology and history and philosophy of science that give me the big picture evolutionary angle about this topic. And I have also written an entire book precisely on today's subject. It is called The AI Rider and in it I analyze why this AI revolution is far more devastating for jobs than all the previous industrial revolutions and what you can do to protect yourself. But you don't need to buy my book because today I'm gonna tell you for free. I will tell you why you are going to lose your job to AI and also the three false narratives that the big tech giants are pushing with the help of a lot of mediocre journalists and futurists. They are using these three fallacies to keep people in denial about the massive job apocalypse that is coming. And finally, I will also tell you what you can do to save yourself from joining that new underclass of the non-working pool. Okay, so let's get started. Take a deep breath because this is gonna hurt. One, why you will lose your job. It's very simple. You are going to lose your job because everybody is going to lose their job. Yes, everybody. You, your boss, your wife, your doctor, your lawyer, myself. Over the next 10 years, one after another, we are all going to be replaced by an AI or an Android. And why everybody will lose their job? It's very simple too, because we are right this minute building the ultimate human replacement technology. That technology is called AGI. AGI stands for the dull name Artificial General Intelligence, but the devil is in the definition. AGI is defined as AI that is at least as good as a human at everything a human can do. And now pay attention to these two bits in the definition, which is what most people overlook at least as good and at everything a human can do. That means that when AGI is developed, there will be no task that a human can do that AGI cannot do at least as well. And here is where comes the first fallacy that you will hear in the media all the time when this problem is discussed. Fallacy number one. But tech always creates more jobs than it destroys. Well, people who say this are suffering from something called past projection bias. Since some pattern has been true until now, it must happen again in the future. Actually, this bias is very common in the individuals who are in the middle of the curve of biological intelligence. These individuals, popularized by the famous IQ curve meme, are sophisticated enough to have heard about the industrial revolutions and how those revolutions created as many jobs as they destroyed but are not sophisticated enough to know that the pattern doesn't apply to the current fourth industrial revolution. But this mistake is very easy to prevent if you really understand what the industrial revolutions were. And to help people visualize the essence of what the industrial revolutions did to the world, I like to call them the automation revolutions, or even the machinization revolutions. Why not? Because that made up word, machinization, brings out the essence of what they did to the world they automated more and more elements of the economic fabric of our societies. They put machines in the place of humans for lots of jobs that before only a human could do. Just one example that shows how dramatic this automation was. In 1750, just before the first industrial revolution, 90% of Americans worked in farms. Now it's only 2% that are required to do agricultural jobs to produce the same amount of food. Well, actually, to produce even more, because we are so rich now that we eat much more food per person than in 1750. So exactly what types of jobs did these three industrial revolutions replace? The first and second automated the physical labor. But not all forms of it. Only the repetitive physical labor could be automated. The third industrial revolution automated the informational labor. But again, not all types of informational labor. Only the repetitive informational labor. That is, only the informational 
tasks that could be reduced to deterministic sequences, which is all the pre-AI software could handle. So now you see the common thread of those three revolutions. Yes, repetitive. And since the machines had automated so many tasks and jobs in agriculture and factories, all those freed up humans could move to the jobs that required some degree of intelligence and that couldn't be automated with machines because we didn't have any form of machine intelligence available yet. But our current fourth industrial revolution is different. This one is the revolution that completes the circle of automation because now artificial intelligence, the final ingredient of automation, has been achieved. Now the non-repetitive physical and informational jobs can also be automated. Not just white collar. But you may be wondering, AI without a body can only replace white collar jobs. But what about blue collar jobs? Worry not, because big tech is also building right now the perfect physical interface for AI, the universal Android. Actually, big tech has been building humanoid robots for many decades, but for big tech, it was always a very low priority side project. Big tech knew they wouldn't be able to really use it in a practical setting for many, many years. Because you know what? They lacked a brain to put in. AI was simply too rudimentary to be useful for robots. You know, all those cool Boston Dynamics robots that you shared on social media during the 2010s. The large majority of all those cool videos were either pre-choreographed or remote controlled by an off-camera guy. That generation of robots were basically very expensive puppets. But then two years ago, the GPT generation of AI came out into the light and everybody in tech realized that AI was reaching near human level intelligence and that it was doing so much earlier than we had thought. The last ingredient that finally could make robots understand the world was ready. That's why now, in parallel to the AI gold rush, an Android gold rush has started, a race to build the first mass-produced humanoid robot. But why is the humanoid form factor so important? Well, actually, Elon Musk has been one of the most candid when it comes to explaining why. His company, Tesla, is one of the leaders in the race towards the universal Android, and this is how he explains it. Um, and it's intended to navigate through a world uh, built for humans, this, I think, will be quite, quite profound because what is the economy? It is, at the foundation, it is labor. So what happens when there is uh, no shortage of, of labor? This is why I think long term that there will need to be universal basic income. Exactly. The closer a robot is to the shape and movements of a human, the easier it is to replace human blue-collar workers with it. Before advanced AI, the workplace had to be transformed to accommodate the shape of the repetitive robots. Now, thanks to advanced AI, the universal Android will be able to understand any physical environment, and thanks to its human-shaped body, it will be able to interact with any physical workplace and already existing tools. It makes sense in a perverse kind of way. If you finally got the AI that allows you to have intelligent robots, and your workplace and tools are already adapted to the shape, size, and hands of humans, why not start by building robots with the same shape of those who you want to replace? Fallacy number two. But the human touch cannot be replaced. I'm sure you've also heard this corny counter argument. It goes like this. Oh, but AI will never be able to replace us because it will always lack dot dot dot. And there you can replace the dot 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 for empathy, creativity, humor, consciousness, you name it. We tend to fall for this one quite happily because we have been conditioned to think that we are special. So it plays very well with our ego. But every new wave of AI has proven this to be incorrect. Every new AI generation does things that until then the AI skeptics said a machine would never be able to do. Talking, driving, drawing, the examples are endless. So the AI skeptics keep moving the goalposts. Art is a great example. The world was in awe when Doll E2 came out and could create great pictures in seconds. But the skeptics immediately resumed their it will never. It will never manage to do symmetric eyes. It will never manage to do hands that are not deformed. It will never draw readable text. But as you know, the following AI models have mastered all those aspects too. So then the skeptics shifted to the creativity goalpost. 
AI art lacks true originality. You can always tell it's not genuinely creative. Then in August 2022, Theater d'Opera Spatial won the Colorado State competition. The human judges admitted that they hadn't realized that a non-human had created it. Another very recurring version of this same argument is the empathy one. AI may get smarter than us, but it will always lack the human touch, the empathy required for so many jobs. And yet, in 2023, the Journal of the American Medical Association published a study that shocked the medical community. The answers of ChatGPT 3.5, compared to the answers given by physicians, scored significantly higher in quality, depth, and accuracy. But that wasn't all. The human scorers also found the answers of GPT 3.5 consistently much higher in empathy than those of the human physicians. Fallacy number three. AI will augment us, it won't replace us. This narrative is the favorite of the big tech CEOs. In interviews, they always use it to reassure the audience with a feel-good vision of the coming AI society because it depicts a lovely tandem between man and machine in which each makes each other better. What's not to like? Well, what's not to like is that it only holds true for a while. The initial versions of AI really do augment human capabilities. Actually, the mixture of man and AI even received a name in chess, the Centaur. After many years of failing at beating the human chess grandmasters, finally, in 1997, Deep Blue managed to do it. But then something interesting happened. Although AI against human was always won by AI, a Centaur, a human making decisions together with an AI, beat AI making decisions alone. But it didn't last. And today, the top AIs, like AlphaZero, beat even the best centers. AI has gotten so many orders of magnitude better than humans that having even a genius human in the loop decreases the quality. To understand why, imagine that Kasparov had to cooperate with an amateur chess player. So for every move, Kasparov would come up with a short list of the three best alternatives he can find and then let the amateur pick the best of the three. That's what a human chess genius is now for an AI, an amateur that can only dumb down its game. Same with artificial general intelligence. At some point, AI will be so good that it will be better working alone than when piloted by a limited human brain. AGI will be better at piloting AGI, let alone ASI at piloting ASI. When AGI? It's impossible to predict the future with precision, but to write my book, The AI Rider, I went through dozens of AGI predictions to try to come up with the best educated guess. And although I could find some outliers, the immense majority of AI scientists expect AGI to be achieved at some point within the next 10 years. So the complete human worker replacement will be possible at some point after AGI is achieved. I've coined the term the AGI robotic industrial complex to describe the coming together of human level AI and advanced robotics that automate every last aspect of the production of goods and services. It won't be as simplistic as this, but imagine a mega factory in which there is not a single human. The white collar jobs are done by computers and the blue collar jobs are done by a mixture of humanoid and non-humanoid robots. Even the technicians who repair the robots and computers are robots and even the engineers who create new better robots and computers are computers. And the trucks that bring and carry stuff away are also another type of robot. Yes, self-driving cars. The fourth industrial revolution completes the automation of labor that had started in the first, second and third. The machinization of the workplace will be complete. How to save yourself? How can you save yourself from joining the underclass of the non-working poor? The answer is to become an AI rider. And what is an AI rider? An AI rider is a human that uses the force of the AI tsunami in his favor instead of being destroyed by it. I use this AI rider metaphor in my book because a powerful horse will stomp you to death if you stand in its way. But if you hop on top of it and ride it, that same destructive power, that same force will take you farther than you could go. So I want you to harness the AI force and ride it. That way, not only you will protect your livelihood, whether it is your job or your business, 
business, but also make much more money thanks to leveraging that same AI force. And maybe you are thinking, but didn't I say that every single person is going to lose their job, even the centaurs? Isn't that a contradiction? Aren't the AI riders also gonna lose their jobs? And yes, if you become an AI rider, you will also lose your job. But you won't mind, because by then you will already own your own chunk of the AI robotics industrial complex. You will join the class of the non-working rich instead of that of the non-working poor. And how can you become an AI rider? Well, in my next video I will go into all the details about how to become a successful AI rider. Also my book is all about that. It's short and sweet at about 130 pages and I priced it at $4 so that anyone can buy it. But if you don't want to spend money there's no problem because in the next video I will give you the roadmap that I explain in the book. Anyway, thanks so so much for watching till here. You are very courageous for looking at reality face to face because only if we are willing to see the problem can we fix it. So you already took the first step. Anyway, take a lot of care of yourself and see you soon.